Hi, welcome to today's episode on White Glove Geography about development indicators. Uh, before we move any further, let's just look at what these two words mean. In geography, the word development uh, shows you how well developed in different ways uh, a country is. So, for example, in previous videos, we've talked about uh, the physical aspects of a country. We've talked about the social aspects of a country. We've talked about the economic aspects of a country. Then we've got the word indicators. So let's have a look at uh, a car, for example. So an indicator on a car shows you which way it intends to go. If you're asked a question in a conversation, you might give an indication of your answer. So it shows which way you're going to go. So it's a piece of information that tells you about something. So indicator is something, a piece of information, that tells you how well developed a country is. So that's all a development indicator is. And there's lots of pieces of information that we can use for this. Some of them are social, some of them are environmental, some of them are climatic, some of them uh, are to do with money, so economic. Here's some development indicators and some pictures that go with them. So we can look at how much money a country has got. We can look uh, the number of births, number of deaths, uh, how well babies are looked after after birth. Um, we can look at uh, how long people are expected to live, uh, health care, we can look at education, uh, things that we need to live, so water for example. And we've got different indicators here uh, that are called composite indicators. We'll talk about those later. Let's take the first one. So we have GNI, or Gross National Income. It's always measured in US dollars. And the it's a measure of the goods and the services in a country divided by the number of people. So it's a total of all the goods and services, and actually the investments in companies overbroad as well, uh, divided by the number of people. And that gives you a gross national income per head, or per capita, it's sometimes referred to. So in the UK, for example, the GNI is about $43,000. Uh, remember, it's not pounds, it's dollars. And in Zimbabwe, uh, the gross national income is about $840. So you can see there's a huge difference there. And that starts to tell us about a country, how much money on average uh, people uh, would earn. Next one, we've got the birth rate. Again, this can be quite useful times about a country, the number of births uh, that take place every year. And it's the number of births for every thousand people. However, I know that very few countries have got just a thousand people in them, exactly. So uh, let's have a look how this works. For example, if a country has got uh, a thousand people in it, and there are ten births, uh, let's multiply that up. So let's say there are five thousand people in a country, that's multiplied by five. Multiply that by 5, so it's 50 per 5,000 people. Let's say there are a million people in the country. Uh, so there are quite a few countries with about a, mil uh, about, about a million people in. So multiply that by 1,000. Multiply that by 1,000. So there will be 10,000 births per million people. So that's the birth rate. Just an example, in the UK, the birth rate is about 12 births per 1,000 people. In Nigeria, the birth rate is about 37 births per thousand people. So Nigeria's got a birth rate that's about three times higher than the UK. Next one, we're going to talk about the death rates. Uh, exactly the same measure, so it's the number of deaths that take place for every thousand people in the country. So let's have a look. Let's say there are a thousand people in the country, and there are five deaths that happen each year in the country. Um, that's quite low. So let's multiply that up. Let's say the country has got about a thousand people. That's multiplied by, uh, sorry, let's say the country has got a hundred thousand people. So we multiplied that up by a hundred, multiply that by a hundred. So that would be 500 births per hundred thousand people. But, so it's comparable between different countries, it's for deaths per thousand people, and it's births per thousand people. In the UK, there are about nine deaths per thousand people, uh, whereas in countries like Nigeria, there are about 13 deaths per thousand people. Next, let's have a look at infant mortality. 
In for mortality, uh, sadly, uh, there's always going to be, in all countries, a number of babies that don't go and survive very long after birth due to all kinds of reasons. Uh, so this is a measure of, before the age of 12 months, how many deaths of young children are there for every thousand births. So let's say in a country there are a thousand births and there are two deaths. That would multiply up. Let's say there are 100,000 people in the country. You're probably a step ahead here. That would be 200. Just to give you an indication about uh, what the typical rates are. So in the UK there are about four uh, deaths of infants per thousand births. In Nigeria it's a lot higher which is 72 deaths per thousand births and that's an interesting measure of how well a uh, developed country is because it talks about the health care of a country. Next we have life expectancy. So that is at the point of birth how long is that child expected to survive in that particular country and it's measured in years uh, sometimes it's higher sometimes it's lower and in the UK for example the life expectancy currently for someone who's born today they would be expected on average to live to about the age of 80 now of course some people live longer than that some people might uh, not live as long as that but it's just an average uh, so UK is about 80 in Nigeria it's an awful lot lower uh, it's the age of 52 and there's all kinds of things that you'll know that influence life expectancy. Next we have people per doctor. So this is it's a ratio between the number of doctors and the number of patients on average that doctor will treat. So for every doctor in the UK they on average treat 350 patients. Now of course there are some doctors that might treat a very very few patients uh, because of their specialism and there are some doctors that might treat an awful lot of patients. So it again is just an average. In Afghanistan for example one doctor treats about 5,000 patients. So you can see there's a massive difference there. 350 as compared to 5,000. So you can see how that's going to affect the healthcare in a country. Next one, the literacy rate. Okay, the literacy rate in a country tells you the percentage of adults that have basic reading and writing skills. So in the UK, the literacy rate is about 99%, and uh, for example in Nigeria it's about 60%. So again, it's a useful indicator, it shows how much the government spends on education or how accessible education is in that particular country. Next indicator is all about safe water. So, you're aware, in the UK, um, uh, everybody has access to safe water. All taps in the country, in households, you turn the tap and you have access to safe, clean drinking water. In many countries, though, uh, very few people have access to safe drinking water. So, for example, in Angola, only 34% of people have access to safe drinking water. In Nigeria, it's about 69% of people have access to safe drinking water. Uh, when we say safe, it's just it's been uh, it's been treated so that waterborne diseases, maybe cholera, for example, uh, there's less risk of that uh, breaking out. Final one, the HDI. This is called the Human Development Index, and it's a what's called a composite index. Composite because it's made up of different parts. It's made up of the health, the education, and the GNI. So, all these indicators in themselves are quite useful, uh, but there might be some discrepancies between these, these indicators. Sometimes maybe the death rate might be really, really high, but the literacy rate might be really, really low. Uh, so, this helps to even out some of those anomalies. So, it takes the health, the education, and the GNI, so uh, how people are treated in the hospitals, their medical care, uh, their access to reading and writing, and their income overall. It's a statistical analysis of a country using all kinds of different formula, but basically the outcome is you end up with a number. And the number 
the higher the number, uh, the more well-developed the country is, and the lower the number, uh, the less well-developed the country is. So, for example, the UK has an HDI index uh, of 0 0.907, and Nigeria has an HDI of 0.514. So that's HDI. So we have a number of development indicators. These development indicators, those help us to show how well-developed a country is. In a summary, we have the gross national income, that's measured in dollars. We have the HDI, it's a composite indicator using healthcare, education and GNI. We have the literacy rate, so measuring education. We have access to safe water, so how well treated water is. Then we have birth rates, death rates, infant mortality rates, uh, the number of people that each doctor has to treat, and on average, how long are people expected to live. Uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, that was White Glove Geography about development indicators.